Today's mission is pretty simple. We're going into the bush to collect more gold ore. This is the entire process from identifying ore bodies out in the bush to collecting the gold, processing and crushing it, extracting the gold out of the crush before smelting all the extracted gold and other precious metals into amalgamation ready for sale. <sighs> that hill never gets easier. That hill never gets easier. Woo! Yeah. That over there is the vein structure that I've been working recently. We're pulling out around three to four grams a bucket from that. When it comes to hard rock, you want to look for dirty quartz like this. See how it's stained with iron and other minerals? That indicates the quartz has the right minerals for a chemical reaction that allows gold to drop out when that vein was formed. Whereas pure white quartz like this, also known as bull quartz, has been exposed to water and the elements. And that creates a chemical reaction that forces the gold deeper into the ground. And the gold ends up collecting a thing called the super gene zone which is a lot deeper than ground level the super gene zone concentrates the gold and that's what the old timers were looking for generally speaking we don't like bull quartz fern is up where i'm going Behind me here is another very sketchy mine. We have never sampled this one. It's got all the things you want. Widow makers and fairly mineralized quartz. I took my sample from just in there and I got about half of a 10 liter buckets worth, which is a good size to sample. Some of it looks all right, but there's a lot of bull quartz in it. So this has definitely been weathered. What gives me hope is that there are nice big sulfide pockets and I can see heavy mineralization within them. I'm gonna take this home and crush it up, but first, we're gonna make sure that we go home with some guaranteed ore. This vein structure is slowly but surely petering out on us. And when I say petering out, it's literally just access. I know currently I'm standing on a 40 foot deep hole that this collapse has just covered up. Like we aren't even in the mine. And this vein just pew, straight down. Whilst I've worked a whole heap of this, I wanna come out on this little nodule and work some of these veins here. They look fairly thin and small with a lot of country rock in them. But in my experience in this spot, these little veins tend to hold a lot of flower gold. This has all the right stuff in it. The only thing is it's extremely weathered. I don't know what's gonna happen with those two mystery buckets, but we're going to find out. One of the fastest ways to figure out if there is gold in the vein is after you take your sample, classify out to one eighth or below mesh. When you chip the rock out of the face, it creates dust. Some of that dust is the quartz that may be containing gold and it's already pre-crushed, ready for you to sample. This is all the dust I managed to get out of our sample. This is going to tell us if there's any gold in that vein. All this is going to tell us is if there is gold in the dirt. If there's gold in the dirt, then proceeding with crushing would be a good idea. And there is gold in the dirt. This is the RC1 Rock Crusher by Keen. It's a lawnmower engine with a prop shaft connected into a combustion chamber that spins really fast and flings the rock into a whole heap of steel baffles. Basically turning rock like this into talcum powder. That's the entrance to the rock crushing chamber. She isn't quite big enough to take rocks this size, so I gotta get rid of them. Now that we've got that done. I always like to try and get the ore down to talcum powder size. The RC1 on first pass does a pretty good job. Obviously we could take it down a little bit more because we've got chunks left. But I'm not gonna worry about that today because this is a sample. If there's really good gold in it, we'll reprocess it. There's a handle around there somewhere. Oh, what? Is it slowing? I'm just gonna roll it. How many prospectors does it take to pick up a bucket? Please, sir, may I have some ore? We're gonna pan down the whole bucket before revealing all of it at the end. Well, hopefully all of it. We saw some gold in the test. There should be a big fat line of it in here. That's what I'm hoping for. That bucket was about one third full, which was about three pans worth of dirt. 
This sample comes from a vein very close to the surface, so it was quite weathered. And I'm not expecting to see a huge amount of gold because of that. But if there is gold in this, it's definitely worth investigating further. And there he is. Look at the fine gold. That is a fantastic result for a very small sample. And bear in mind that we didn't get most of this dirt down to talcum powder. If you don't break these sort of rocks here, and even this little bit of sand down to talcum powder, you won't release all of that fine gold. There is probably just as much gold as what we got in our tailings locked up in the rock. First bucket, not too bad. Let's do some high grade stuff and see what really good ore looks like. This ore is from the high grade section. And when I tell you that we've been pulling out some magnificent gold with it, we have been pulling grams of gold per bucket. That's only half a bucket. And by the time I ferret all the big rocks out of it, it'll probably be a quarter of a bucket, but we should still see a good take of color. This is what you're looking for when I mention dirty quartz. You can see here the actual quartz that's been weather worn out, but right on the edge of it, we've got all kinds of mineralization. These minerals, when quartz is in liquid form, are what allow the gold to drop out of suspension in the fluid and form those gold nuggets. When I say gold nuggets, I don't mean the big pieces you might see on TV shows, but even those very fine flakes we got in the last run. When gold is in suspension in quartz, we're talking about microscopic scale. And other minerals such as iron allow that gold to clump together. Helping. Hopefully that has it all sorted out so we don't get any rock jams. But knowing my luck, there will be a rock jam. It's really loud, but you only have to run it for a minute, which I am thankful for. We know we're going to have to run this through the ball mill to release all the very fine gold. We're talking 200 mesh minus. But for now, that's going to allow us to see some nice color. I shouldn't promise things like that, because usually when I say, we're going to see some really good gold, we see nothing. Making a potion. Do a little bit of magic. Summon the gold into Summon existence. The gold. We did a total of about half a bucket's worth of ore crush. And these are our final concentrates. Clean water, that helps. It's hard to see yellow gold through yellow mud. The gold you're gonna see is gonna be extremely fine. This is why we have to run this again. We're not gonna be doing that today. We just wanna see what kind of gold is in that ore. We could probably safely say we could double our gold take by re-crushing it in the bull mill. There we have it. Look how fine that stuff is. Woo! <laughs> that is a very nice smile of gold. And this is why we have to re-crush it. That silver material is going to be a mix of iron sulfides as well as steel off the crusher. The gold from this ore is so incredibly fine that there will be grades we visibly can't see. You would need to use chemical extraction or smelting to extract all of the gold. I don't like chemicals, but I do like fire. This is what we got out of the first bucket, and this is what we got out of the premium oil. We're just drying off the gold we recovered from what we sampled, and then we'll be adding it to the 3.8 grams of gold we were already recovered. Remember those bits of silver sulfides I was talking about? That's where this comes in. It's called flux. Flux does a couple of different things in your smelt depending on the mixture. If you have an oxidizer in your flux, it'll help get rid of those sulfides and collect other impurities out of your gold. So this is a very basic step in refining your gold to being 99.9% .9 pure. However, it must be said, I am learning to do this and I am going to make mistakes. I'm using a whole heap of resources, but this is our first really big smelt. So if you have any tips, please leave them in the comments below. Things I already know I'm doing wrong. This is a really big crucible. That's a really big mold. And that is not enough gold to fill all that up. Here we go. That's the last time we're going to see that as flakes. When it comes to flux measurements, you want about equal amounts. I have about four grams of gold, so we're going to use four grams of flux. Shake it all about and get it nice and mixed up into our tiny little bench top furnace. That little furnace can do it, it just takes a little while to heat up. So normally you wouldn't take the lid off, but I just wanted to show you guys the gold. That little glowing thing right there is the gold coming together.
I have done a grand total of only five smelts in my entire life. My accuracy of pouring into a mold, even one this big, is not great, so we decided to eventually pour into water. The silver colour of the gold that we poured out is due to impurities contained within the smelt. The sulphides contain a high level of silver and lead, and these are really good at absorbing precious metals such as gold. And when you smelt, they mix together and end up looking like this. It's a pretty simple remedy to fix this, although I don't have the correct flux to do so. You just need to add an oxidizing agent. The oxidizing agent helps turn those impurities into slag and they literally break away from the gold. Now we're gonna put this gold alloy on the scales and see how much we got. We know we burned off a lot of impurities in terms of the sulfides. They would have literally oxidized and evaporated away. So we won't have the 3.8 to four grams of gold that we put in there. We should have a bit less. First, the tiny little bit broke off. 0.165, and now the big chunker, 3.376. That means we burnt off almost half a gram's worth of impurities, and our gold ore is mixed with galena, which is a mixture of lead and silver. I will have to buy cupelling equipment to refine that gold down to nothing but pure gold and separate it from the silver and lead. But until then, please give your dog a big scratch behind the ears for me. Leave your tips and tricks in the comments below. Peace, and I'm out.